For the best prices and service on Pokemon TCG singles and products, check out ccgcastle.com and use promo code EVOLUTIONARIES-5 for 5% off your next order. Hello Pokemon fans, I'm Professor K for the Pokemon Evolutionaries and today we are back with another deck for Deck Tech Thursday and I figured what better opportunity then to show you guys the deck that I took to the Memphis Regional Championships this past weekend. Uh, my list is the exact same 60 as Azul. Grigo Garcia, as you guys may have seen, he got second place at Memphis. Uh, this is actually his deck. I took the same exact 60 and tried it out for myself. And unfortunately, my matchups weren't really the favorable ones that the rest of the meta really was shaping up to be for this tournament. I actually did not face any Zoark Lycanroc. I didn't face any Buzzwool decks. And I did not face any Greninja decks, which is what I was really banking on seeing. So the deck didn't work for me as well as it should have. And in the times where I faced matchups that should have been better than 50% for me, I actually dead drew very hard. But it definitely was a good call for the meta because Azul did manage to pilot the deck very successfully to the top, all the way to second place. And he did face those matchups that I did not get the opportunity to face. So that deck is Galissapod Garbodor. Let's go ahead and get started here. I'll show you guys what is in this deck, the exact same 60 list, 60 card list that we both played. So first off, we've got four copies of Wimpod. You want to use the one from Burning Shadows, and that is with the ability Wimp Out. During your first turn, this Pokemon has no retreat cost. This comes in handy very much so if you start with it and you're going uh, either first or second. I guess it really doesn't matter, but you can get your Wimpods out of harm's way and force your opponent to Guzma around. So there's four of those. And then we have three copies of Golisopod GX. I keep calling it Golisopod. It's actually Golisopod. It's Goliath Isopod, I know. Uh, Golisopod GX, 210 HP. You're gonna use this for a number of circumstances based upon your matchup. First impression, 30 damage, and if it comes into play off the bench, and the active position uh, this turn, it does 90 more damage. 120 damage for a single grass energy is pretty strong. Armor Press for a Grass and Double Colorless does 100 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 20 less damage, which is a big, big factor in a lot of matchups as well, especially in the meta right now. Then as GX Attack is Crossing Cut, GX does 150 damage. Switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. This is really good for knocking out things late game with a Choice Band, does 180. You can knock out Leles and things like that with this. Uh, it's pretty strong and it's a great attacker, especially considering all of the Lycanroc that was going around, and also Greninja. Grass is obviously a good choice right now. I just didn't see any, that's the unfortunate thing. All right, another thing is we have a lot of Zora going around and a lot of things with abilities, and since we really don't need our abilities that much, with the exception of Tapu Lele from time to time, uh, we definitely want to run something to stop other decks that bank on those. So we've got three copies of Shrubbish here from Breakpoint. This is the one that I chose. Uh, you're never going to attack with it because you don't have the energy requirements anyway. So we went with this one. That way we can evolve into what we really want to use, which is two copies of Garbodor. Garbo Garbodor says, uh, it, its ability says uh, Garbotoxin. If uh, this Pokemon has a Pokemon tool card attached to it, each Pokemon to play in each player's hand and in each player's discard pile has no abilities except for Garbotoxin. So we're shutting off trade. We're shutting off uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes. We're shutting off a lot of things. Uh, no Wonder Tag, things like that. So it's very strong and it can prevent a lot of these decks that depend on those abilities from doing well and dead drawing themselves. We also have one copy of Tapu Koko. It's a free retreater and it does 20 damage for a double cost energy to everybody on the field, which can really help the numbers for Galisopod later on as well. I mostly just use it to retreat into, so that way I have something to retreat back to be able to first impression. For all of the Buzzle decks that were out there, everybody was pretty much putting in this card. Mewtwo from Evolutions. Psychic does 20 damage, plus it does 20 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. This was supposed to be the counter for Buzzwool. I never saw it, so I never really used this card at all. Uh, I think I might have used it once, actually, now that I think about it, and that was it. And I used it against Espeon. <laughs> uh, Espeon GX, yes, I did see Espeon Garb. I used this thing against an Espeon GX to knock it out. It had uh, three energy attached to it and I was able to knock it out with a choice ban. So it was kind of fun for that purpose, but it was mainly for this matchup right here that we never saw. The last Pokemon that we have here is three copies of Tapu Lele GX. 
strictly really supposed to be used for wonder tag um being able to start you out a supporter that's always a good thing and also energy drive is not a bad attack either 20 damage times the number of energy attached to this pokemon and your opponent's active pokemon just no weakness and resistance that can also come in handy uh against ho-oh salazzle this is the only way i was able to take any prizes at all energy drive on a ho-oh with four energy on it and a choice band for my lele that's the only way i was able to take prizes i took four prizes in that match everything else i mean it completely destroys galisopod whether the Volcanion does it, whether the Ho-Oh does it, whether the Salazzle does it, doesn't matter. Uh, it's just a really, really bad matchup for this deck in specific. So I just basically depended on Tapu Lele. Did what I could, but still, it's an auto loss, so I lost. All right, on to the supporters. We've got four copies of Professor Sycamore. Discard your hand, draw seven cards. Straightforward. This deck definitely needs draw, and uh, lots and lots of it, because uh, it can definitely brick, and it did on me unfortunately. We got four copies of N. Each player shuffles as their hand into his or her deck. They draw a card for each of their remaining prize cards. Um, of course, you know, there's pretty much four N in every deck these days. We also have four copies of Guzma. This is a big time staple in this deck. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon and switch your own active with one of your benched as well. This is the way that you really get first impression to deal the damage that it needs to deal. We also have a very low count, and this is where I was a little bit sketchy on uh, this list. There's only two copies of Acerola in the deck. That's all that was run, and I felt like I could have used more, but again, there's not a whole lot of room for this. Uh, put one card that has any damage, one Pokemon that has any damage counters on it, and all cards attached to it into your hand. So this is what saves your Golisopods from being knocked out. We're in a format where two shot is everything. So if you have an, an Acerola or an access to an Acerola through Tapu Lele, then uh, you're able to save yourself from your Golisopod being knocked out and uh, getting an extra turn out of it. This deck also only plays one copy of Bridget to get out three basic Pokemon or one basic Pokemon EX onto the bench. I only had one game where Bridget was prized and that was it. I got very, very lucky with that. But uh, I did have a few games where Tapu Koko was prized, so that was a little bit of an annoying thing. But uh, other than that, I didn't really miss having extra Bridgets, and I, I think that was mostly more out of luck than anything else. So that's it for supporters. Let's go into items. Four copies of Ultra Ball, discard two cards, get a Pokemon. We all know what that does. Pretty straightforward, very simple. Also, four copies of Floatstone. Yes, I know I have one that doesn't match, but I only seem to have three of this and only like two of this so it, it is what it is but uh this pokemon the pokemon this card is attached to has no retreat cost this is what you're going to use to activate your garbotoxin uh more often than not that's what you want to do unless it's a crucial necessity to turn on garbotoxin and you have to attach a choice band to it which really really hurts uh if they choose to guzma that out because there's no way to retreat it without paying three energy cost or guzma out of it yourself which is sometimes a pain this is where this deck is very different than other Golisopod decks, and this is where I was like, wow, I really like this deck because of this. Four copies of Enhanced Hammer. In this format, people are playing four to seven energy. Almost every deck is. Almost every deck. So with decks that are so heavily reliant on special energy, four copies can really slow down something like Zoroark. Again, I didn't see enough of it for it to matter, sadly, but this is definitely something that could really cause a lot of problems for them. Uh, discard a special energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. No other questions asked. Just get rid of it. So a lot of double colorless energies went into the discard pile in this tournament thanks to those cards. I was able to pull it off a couple times, but uh, not enough to really make a difference because of the matchups that I had. I even had a few matchups, but what didn't even matter. They didn't even play special energy. We also have three copies of Choice Band. Do 30 more damage to all of your opponent's active Pokemon EX or GX. Uh, again, straightforward can deal 150 with first impression, 130 with armor press, and 180 with crossing cut GX. It also turns Tapu Koko into a 50 to the active and 20 to everybody else. It can help the matchup to uh, increase damage with Mewtwo, it can increase with energy drive, anything and everything you want it to. We also have two copies of Heavy Ball. Heavy Ball says search your deck for a Pokemon with a treat cost of three or more, reveal it and put it into your hand, shuffle your deck afterward. So this can actually grab Garbodor. It can grab Golisopod. It can add, grab Wimpod. All good targets for Heavy Ball. All right, we also have one copy of Rescue Stretcher. Uh, you can either get a Pokemon from your discard pile and put it into your hand, 
or you can get a Pokemon or three Pokemon from your discard pile and shuffle them into your deck. This helped a lot late game to get a Tapu Lele back out of the discard pile to get a Guzma for game or something else that I needed like Acerola. Now we're back down to the energy. We have six total grass energy. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six grass energy, six basic grass energy, and four copies of double colorless energy. One, two, three, four. That's the entire deck, guys. That is everything. So, again, it was good enough to get second place at Memphis Regionals with the right matchups. And again, it, it all comes down to the same thing. When you're playing in, a, in an event that has 999 masters, your matchups are always going to be different, and no one's going to have the same kind of day. There's so many decks right now that are good in this format that it's really hard to predict what you're going to be up against. You can only kind of try to play against the majority and plan to play against the majority. I personally did not. I faced decks like uh, Quad Wobbuffet, Ho-Oh Salazzle, Straight Lorantis GX, Espeon Garb, all things that I never expected to see. I did face four Zoroark variants. I faced Zoroark Decidueye twice, and I faced Zoroark Glycopod twice as well. The Zoroark Glycopod lists were very weird, though. They played four Talonflame. It was kind of hard to read. I did drew a lot against those. I either tied or lost to three of those four. Uh, I only beat one Zoroark Decidueye, and that was it. It was kind of unfortunate. But the decks that I needed to draw well against, I couldn't, and the rest of them were just really weird matchups. So... It is what it is. But anyways, guys, that's the list. If you guys were wondering what Azul played, this is the exact list. This is exactly what I played. Obviously, he had a lot more success than I did, but that's just the way it goes in Pokemon. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below, subscribe for more TCG content, and uh, build this list for yourself and try it out. It's still a good option here in the meta right now with Lycanroc getting a huge surge in popularity recently, um, and also against Buzzle as well. Except the only thing is, I personally, would rather see Mew EX over Mewtwo because you can actually get an extra uh, first impression, armor press, crossing crut, uh, flying flip, energy drive, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, you'll be able to hit, well, you don't want to use energy drive. You'll be able to hit Buzzhole for weakness with Mew EX. That's the only other thing that I think would be good in here. And I feel like it's a better choice than Mewtwo uh, just because you can deal more damage using the attacks of other Pokemon than relying on Psychic. If they don't have a lot of energy attached to them, it doesn't really matter anyways. I think Mew EX is a better choice looking forward. That's the only thing that I think I would change personally. But you guys can do what you want with it. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Take care and have a great day. <laughs>